Hello, my friends and favorite people of the internet. The time has come for me to provide you with an updated tour of my YouTube studio at home as it is right now. I've made some gear upgrades and changes this year. In fact, I have a brand new microphone that I'm using for the first time in this video. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But if you're wondering what I use to create my YouTube videos, we're going to get into it. And if you're new here, my name is Meredith Marsh. And here on this channel, I'm here to help you you look good, sound good, and feel good on camera so that you can build your thriving online business with YouTube. And I have been filming like 99.9% .9 of my YouTube videos in a spare bedroom in the basement of my house, like for the last, I don't know, six years. It's very oddly shaped and I have a very large desk that I bought for 50 bucks off of Facebook Marketplace. And I positioned my desk sort of oddly in the center of this room. One, because I I want to have the right angle for my camera and my shelves and my lights. I want to be far enough away from it that it I can get a good blurry background with my camera lens, but I, I don't want my desk to just be like crammed into the corner because I also want to get behind it because I have my lights, my camera, my teleprompter, my whiteboard, my printer, a bunch of these boxes that I refuse to get rid of like a psycho. Oh, and all of the cables and cords and my computer itself. So what you see here behind me, I like to call my YouTubicle because it's like this tiny little space behind me is what you see. And what's on the other side of the camera is the stuff that you don't see. But there's a lot of cool stuff back there. So let's talk about it. One thing I did upgrade this year was my computer itself. So this is the newest Mac Studio. I upgraded from eight gigabytes of RAM to 32 gigabytes of RAM. There's a ton of ports back here. I can plug everything in that I need to have in, plugged in, like all the important stuff. That's one of the reasons why I upgraded because I had an older Mac mini from like early 2020, I think. And I just ran out of places to plug stuff into. Plus it was really, really slow. And the reason why I have the Mac Studio sitting on these file boxes is because just the teeniest amount of vibration. So that's why I have the Mac Studio sort of relegated to the dusty corner over there. I do keep all of my video files, video assets on an external hard drive. This is a Lacey like four or five terabyte external hard drive. I am still loving this Elgato key light and I only use one of them. I've thought about maybe like picking one up on the next Black Friday deal, but honestly, one of them works just perfectly in my opinion. It doesn't take up a lot of space. I don't have to move it. It's controllable from my computer or from my stream deck, but I, I, I don't really ever change the settings on it at all. I also have a regular like household lamp, like nothing fancy over here on the other side with like a fairly warm colored light bulb because those daylight light bulbs are the worst. So I just really like a warmer tone. I think it works well with my skin. And so that those are the two lights that I have, plus my window, which has shades that I can open, but I never do. And I was going to do this before I hit record. I was going to tuck these up so they weren't hanging down, but that's okay. I do also have the Elgato string lights. I have, I think, three or four sets of them so that they kind of fill the whole background there. They were a little bit complicated to set up, which is probably why I've been avoiding messing with these, but they have a sticky back that I didn't stick, obviously, that I need to stick up there so that you can't see the lights, but only just like see the glow of the lights like you can see back there. But those are made by Elgato. I love them also because I can control them from my computer or from my stream deck. Like I can change the color. I have some like preset colors in here um, that I can change or I can turn them off completely completely if I want to. Look how boring that is. I have been thinking about maybe painting my office for 2024. I don't know. I painted it this color a couple years ago. Don't paint your walls the same color as your skin tone. Just 
don't do that. Um, but it's one of the reasons why I like having these lights behind me because um, I can kind of separate myself a little bit more from my background. And it's a little bit more fun like that. I also have a couple of these like LED lights from Stellar. These are really harsh, but every once in a while, I want to film so that my desk and stuff is actually behind me. So I'll scoot my chair over there and set up my camera. And so I just have those in place facing the wall so they bounce off the wall. Or if I happen to need to film in here when it's dark outside, I might bounce them off the wall so that I have a little bit more light coming in. And I, of course, have a junk corner over here on the other side as well. Batteries, chargers, cables. But let's talk about the Stream Deck real quick because the Stream Deck is basically a little device here with buttons where I can program it to open up a website or to start a Zoom call. I can control my lights with it, of course, and I can also use shortcuts for different video editing. It's very convenient and it's fun to press buttons. You know, we all love pressing buttons. Speaking of pressing buttons, another device that I added to my setup this year is the MCaster Studio. I bought this a couple months ago after trying the Rode Streamer X and that didn't work out too well. I did a whole video on it, but because I went down a whole rabbit hole of trying different microphones, learning about different microphones and audio editing and audio interfaces and whatnot. I got this MCaster Studio and I really like it. It's, re it's really just a way to plug the microphone into a thing so that the audio can go into my computer. It does a bunch of other stuff too. Like, like I can turn my voice into a munchkin voice with a click of a button. And, you know, that's pretty fun, but it's also like not something that I use very often or ever. So let me turn this on. There we go. So plugged into the MCaster Studio is, of course, my microphone and my in-ear monitor. So the microphone I'm using right now today to record this video is the Shure SM7DB, which is the brand new version of the Shure SM7B. Prior to a couple months ago, I was using the Audio-Technica ATR2100. And um, like I said, I went down a whole audio rabbit hole. And this is kind of like where I'm ending up. I don't think I'm going to change anything after this. Once I plugged this mic in and started using it, I realized why this microphone is so popular. So I'll probably do a whole video about that, but I will, of course, link to this microphone down below this video. And because I was on the Shure website, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try the Shure in-ear monitors. I want to be able to hear myself, but I don't really want to wear headphones. For my microphone stand, I use the Elgato Wave Arm LP or Mic Arm LP. It's meant to be a low profile, but because I have it mounted to the shelves that I built for my desk, um, it's not very low profile. It's fine for me. And I like it better than having one of the mic arms that would be like actually in my face or in the way. I really love the Elgato products and I actually don't use a tripod at all these days. I'm using the Elgato master mounts. My Elgato key light is on a master mount. That's the master mount L. L stands for large, I guess. And then my camera with my teleprompter is on the master mount S which stands for small, I guess. So those are both mounted to the shelves that are clamped to my desk. I am still using an ancient monitor. This is the Apple Thunderbolt display. I think it's about a decade old. This is one of probably one of the oldest pieces of gear that I still use, but I did have to get a new stand for it. And I had to get a like adapter and everything. It was a real pain to set this up, but it works out really well because the way I have my teleprompter positioned and like the distance that it needs to be from my face, I had to have this little extender pole, which comes with these master mounts. And that's just resting on my monitor stand because gravity. And so it works out perfectly, but I can't really move anything. Now, I did do a whole video on my teleprompter setup. It stays there. The camera's there. I'm not using it right now. I'm not reading from the teleprompter. I'm just looking through the glass 
at the camera lens. This is the newer teleprompter. It's very affordable. It's very well made. I did a whole video on exactly how I set this up because it's also kind of a pain, but I'll link to that below this video too. If you're curious about having a teleprompter set up, I don't really use it as a teleprompter like that you would typically think of with scrolling words. I actually use it as a second monitor if I'm live streaming or I have a Zoom call or if I want to have my video notes in front of me. It's very convenient for that. As far as my camera that I'm recording on right now, I am still rocking the Canon M50 Mark II with a 16 millimeter lens from Sigma. It's still my favorite. I don't really have any reason to upgrade, but the truth is I can't really shoot my videos in 4K with this camera because it crops in so far um, that I would have to rearrange my whole office and I'm not gonna do that. So I, I will probably be like the last YouTube creator still creating videos at 1080, which is fine. Um, but at some point I probably will have to upgrade the camera, which means I'm also gonna have to upgrade the lens. But right now, this is a great setup. I love it. And I do still use the cam link to connect the camera to the computer. I know there's software that Canon has that makes it possible to do that, but it, it never did work for me. And the cam link has never failed. I do also have the Canon R10, which I'm going to film all of the B-roll that you've been watching on this camera. This is also the camera that I take outside of the house. I did upgrade the lens on this. It's not really an upgrade, but um, I got the Canon 16 millimeter F 2.8 um, because I wanted a lens that was a little bit closer to the look of my Sigma lens here. It's okay, but it's a relatively inexpensive lens and it's really loud when it's uh, like focusing. It's a good extra camera to have, but if I was going to use this as my like daily driver, I think I would really need to upgrade the lens, like an actual upgrade, not just whatever Canon thought they did with that lens. One of my probably favorite, but very overlooked pieces of gear that I added to my setup this year is the Apple trackpad. As far as the stuff on the shelves behind me, from basically from here over is like junk and here up is junk. Everything here is pretty much like my set, if you will. I got this little um, horse um, when I was in Sweden. So I added that to my set, but I keep all of the boxes for the gear that I have because if I ever want to like sell it or if I need to return it or if I just want to pack it away and it's original container. And for videos that I record where I'm not sitting in front of my desk where I can just use a, a microphone like this, I still love the DJI microphone. It's a wireless lavalier mic. I use it with the camera. I use it with my phone. It's so easy that you can just plug and play it into whatever device you happen to be using. I still hate that it has this extra little cord because I, I forgot to take this with me when I went to Sweden. Luckily, because the DJI mic has internal recording, I was able to record it into the microphone itself without having to connect the receiver to the camera. And it worked out fine. I just had to sync the audio later. But if DJI comes out with a DJI Mic 2.0 with a thing that's not detached, it's mine. I'm getting it. Just for fun, as something to try out, I did pick up this Shure MVX2U uh, digital audio interface. So this is a little thing. It looks like a cigarette lighter, like an old school from way back in the day for, for those of us that are elder millennials and older. It allows you to take an XLR microphone like this and plug it into your computer using a USB-C. If you can use a really great professional sounding microphone and not have to invest in an a professional audio setup like with a mixer or a roadcaster or MCaster studio from Mackie, then I mean, I think 
that's pretty cool. I like what Shure did here, so I'm excited to try this out. And I did upgrade my phone to the 15 Pro Max. And while I typically don't use my iPhone for video creation, I want to explore more of that in the coming year because, I mean, these phones are just getting more and more ridiculous in terms of video quality and image quality. Like it's starting to look more and more like having a, you know, quote unquote, real camera is getting less and less necessary, which is both fun and interesting and also kind of weird and scary. So I'm going to link to everything. If you have questions about anything or want more details about my setup or my gear or what I'm using or what I'm doing to create my YouTube videos, hit me up in the comments. Now, given how my setup started when I first started creating videos, I've spent a lot more money on gear, but my videos look better and sound better. But I've picked up a lot of tips, tricks, and hacks for creating pro looking videos from home when you're really not a pro and you're just kind of DIYing it on your own. So I am kicking off a whole new series here on my channel called Crush It On Camera. I'll link to it over here for you and down below. It probably won't be there until I publish that first video. So in the meantime, just watch whatever I have up here. It'll be good, I promise.